Welcome to my walkthrough for Fire Emblem Three Houses. In this video, I've actually... This is actually a re-upload of a previous video for the Underground Chamber because I accidentally got rid of the original video. Oops. As a result, I'm going to play this pretty straight, actually. Just to give as good as a... Uh, Sorry, I should rephrase that. To give a good playthrough and a pretty decent walkthrough for this. As a result, I'll only be playing with units from the Black Eagle House, presuming that I haven't recruited anybody. Everyone is a pretty high level, I'll give you that. But this is just a walkthrough to show you what to expect, rather than to see me endure a huge challenge, because that's not really the point of this walkthrough. Everyone is ready to go. I will just begin the mission. Now your victory conditions are to defeat the Death Knight or rout all other enemies. Your defeat conditions, all of your units fall in battle or on hard maddening. Byleth falls or 25 turns pass. Our objective is to recover. Hmm. Alright. Now, I'm just going to go back to the... Con the conditions because there is something I need to cover here. Your victory conditions are to defeat the Death Knight or rout all other enemies. That being said, however, not all of the enemies are present on the map right now. And I will trigger both scenarios so that you see how you can finish this mission. Now the Death Knight is at a very high level 20 and he'll need a bit of planning if you're going to take him down. Because he's higher level than most of my team, except for Byleth, and that's not a good sign. Now, for this mission, I'm going to have Caspar, Petra, oops, Petra, Dorothea, and Bernadetta go through the warp portal. Byleth. Ferdinand, Hubert, Linhart will make Stay will focused. make their way to the Death Knight. And it's highly recommended that you do both paths or you split your units into two teams because this team is going to reach this lever room which is going to just help unlock doors to the Death Knight. Otherwise you're going to have to fight your way for basically what amounts to a door key just to open this door. Now, if you have Ash, you don't really need that. You can just open doors with Lock Touch. But I don't have Ash, and I'm playing from the Black Eagle's house, so I'm just going to continue as is. Ooh, I actually don't have a lot of Iron Sword charges left. As expected. Another step. Oh, Another step. Yep. You, you're going to need the door keys, and remember, you're going to need the door keys just to open these doors. So the gate needs a door key, and this door to the Death Knight needs a door key. Even if you're not going to kill the Death Knight, you still need to be able to open that door. Ferdinand von Eyre. Okay, Ferdinand is there. As you wish. Going on what basically amounts to a short suicide run. I wish they wouldn't use my most powerful spells first, but that's how it is. This was beneath me. Now these units don't, aren't Always too difficult. Get. They're about the same general level that you would normally be at if you've been training and keeping up on normal difficulty. If you're on hard or you're on maddening, they're going to be at a significantly higher level. Which means, as a result, you probably want to take a bit more care and strategy. So using my anthem because I don't want to keep using death. Regular iron sword. Only a fool challenges me. And have Byleth could shoot. The next room 
contraptions in the floor. Really has a lot of avoidance floor tiles, which means any unit standing on them is going to get a bonus to evasion. Right. Now, in this case, when you warp, you still get a bit of movement. Don't think that once you've warped, that's it. You still, that precious amount of movement will help your units get into position once they're on a warp tile. And the reason why I point this out is because you want to be able to do things like this. Winning's always nice. Which I couldn't do if I assumed only one unit could pass through at a time. That's clearly not true. So don't work under that assumption. Now there's a reason I brought Bernadetta along. And that's because there are a series of archers through the warp tile that I'm not going to do well without. Okay, how Byleth is counterattacking? I actually have the fourth wave of, of downloadable content, which gives me an item that allows me to counterattack from any distance. A lot like the Death Knight. Now, the reason why I bought Dorothea on this path and separated everyone from Linhart was because Dorothea's Songstress ability... Uh, I can bring it up. Allows allies who are next to her to heal up to 10% of their health at the start of each turn. That isn't... doesn't sound like a lot, but over time, the, the values can start to build up. But it only works if Dorothea is right next to somebody. Otherwise, it's not very effective. No. Byleth, just for speed's sake, is going to get the sword back. Each battle, a chance to grow. And everybody else is just going to march on ahead. You should be on. If you're struggling with the avoidance tiles, magic is able to hit units without factoring much of the avoidance floor tiles into effect. Sorry. They are able to they are a, you are able to use magic on units who are standing on the avoidance floor tiles and they will still have roughly about the same level of accuracy. That being said, make use of them and keep your units on. You don't have Edelgard, so Kaspar, as you just saw earlier, is going to be tanking a lot of the attacks from these archers. And the reason why this is important is because, well, those archers have door keys that allow you to open these doors. Now, if I didn't take someone like Pet, like Bernadetta, I'd have to hope that Dorothea has the magic to be able to hit. And this is not always true. In this case, my Doroth my Dorothea has Thorin. So she can, but if you don't, you're going to have to bring Bernadetta along. And it's basically going to be an archer fight. But you don't really have a choice in this scenario because on lower levels, the archer is just going to keep pelting you. I'm actually going to have him switch. Not too many turns have passed just yet, but I still keep. I'm still keeping the team together somewhat. Violet still needs to open this door. Now, be careful when you go run into this section, because despite the fact that, yes, I had to use a door key to open this gate, this gate was already open from the get-go, meaning I have two mages, one mage and one dark mage, 
just go over the mage again. And they can pose a bit of a threat if not properly taken care of. Now my characters are not afraid of the threats, but that doesn't mean be reckless. As you're seeing, Ferdinand is still taking quite a beating, and these units will not fail to gang up on you. Now I'm gonna have. There's another warp portal here. Let's warp through. Bernadette is gonna do another archer fight. Anywhere I can hide. That gets her another door key, which is enough for everyone to basically make their way up. Looks like I'm out of movement for Dorothea, so everyone's just gonna have to sit. Now, I'm gonna have Byleth make their way forward. Gonna rush things a little. He's gonna use his magic to take out that soldier. Or he was supposed to, at least, but, uh, we'll excuse him. We'll heal up Ferdinand because he's taking a bit of a beating. Now, if I wasn't going to take out the Death Knight, I would have just easily just killed everyone. But the noble keep in mind that if you're if you're worried about the Death Knight and you don't want to take him on, you're going to have to take out every single enemy, and you can't rush your way forward. Not that that was a smart move to begin with, but, uh, yeah, you really don't want to rush. Unless you're you're trying to take out the Death Knight. Now, I'm not going to have a problem taking out the Death Knight, as you are probably guessing. But, just in case you are, I'll just show you where all the enemies will be. Okay, so I'll open the first door. Now keep in mind, I have to be able to open this door as well, that's why I needed two door keys. One from the archer that was here, and the other that was on this part of the map. Can't see very well sometimes. Oops. Caspar will warp. And it is really important that you get Caspar with you. Because units will start to spring open, which will appear, once this door is open, and having a tank like Caspar, who admittedly is the tankiest person on this four-person team, is going to be a very big help. Because if I send an archer like Bernadetta into there all by her lonesome, it would pose a problem. Now, Ferdinand would normally not do so well. You can see that he's got a hit rate of about 67. If you're in doubts, magic, while not as effective, has a much higher hit rate even if the opponent doesn't have... I mean, if even if the opponent is standing on an avoid tile. For Lady Edelgard. If you're wondering how Hubert is... Why Hubert is dressed the way he is, I did defeat the Death Knight in a... in a previous mission, which was the Rite of Rebirth. That's why, in the Underground Chamber, Hubert can have the, uh... Dark Mage... Uh, the Dark Mage, the Dark Mage class. Anyway, gambits will get in your way here to slow you down, because well, that's what gambits do. And normally, if I was playing for time or speed running, I would probably be making my way to the Death Knight. But I'm not really speed running, because well, you could probably tell that. uh... I've leveled my characters a bit, so clearly I wasn't playing this to be the fastest person alive or anything. From this distance, you are able to attack some of the units here, but hold your fire because you can probably only do that if they've got a high amount of range and or attacks that consume a lot of durability, like Deadeye, which, depending on the level of your archer slash uh, sniper, may not be very high. 
hold back the urge if durabil preserving durability is a focus. Otherwise, go wild. I should also point out that if you're struggling, this is a heal tile that you can use to take a little bit of a break, but don't stick around too long because you only have 25 turns, and I'm on turn 9, moving as fast as I can. Alright, now, this is the moment of truth. Bernadette is going to open the door. Ooh, I get a yellow spirit. What did I... And immediately these units appear. So you have come. With Caspar in the front, he will be able to tank these two Flame Reaper soldiers. Now, if you're playing with the Blue Lion House, you're most likely going to have either Felix, Sylvain, or Dudu take that role of the tank. If you are playing the Golden Deer House, you're going to have Raphael take the role of the Damage Sponge. This way. Get all the units here. I'll open the door. Now, the Death Knight won't attack until you attack him. Which means, as long as you don't hurt the Death Knight, you can take out these three units without worrying about the Death Knight interfering. On Maddening, obviously this will be different because the Death Knight is going to chase you regardless of what you do. But obviously, because he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't break the door... You can't rely on the Death Knight charging you as a way to shortcut and fight only him. Should I have held back? I'm only able to take out these units thanks to the DLC, but they would have been dead anyway. A chance to grow. That is that. They won't attack you either until the door is open, so. If your characters are under are not as high of a level or you're playing on hard, you'll want to wait until your units are gathered and or healed before you open the door. Now, of course, Dorothea was going to get hit by that archer because the game is a jerk like that. Now, I'm going to activate the lever here because that's going to open these... What activating that lever does is opens these warp tiles. And these warp tiles will warp you all around the map, but can also help you reunite with your team. But first... Nope, I'm gonna dead eye that. Knight in the corner for critical, lucky critical, and it's down. You're making me look bad. Well, for this poor archer, he gets a face full of magic. You were wide open. You're having a bit too much fun. As you can see, I had to kill all the enemies on that map. And that's the end of the mission. We will cross them. Flame Emperor? Are they both among the enemies with- And that is the underground chamber walkthrough. Pretty much in a nutshell. That was to defeat the enemies on that map. Now, I've just done a very quick different playthrough where I'm going to attempt to take on the Death Knight. You'll notice that even though I've cleared out all the units, I haven't cleared out the units on this side of the map, and thus the game hasn't treated it like I've uh, won. Now, obviously, because of my character's level, this doesn't look as bad, but you have to remember, the Death Knight's pretty powerful. That Scythe, as well as his ability to counterattack across the map, 
will make pretty much any attack for the Death Knight have to be a calculated move. Extra hit. Poison Strike, which if they hit you means you can lose up to 20% of your max health, means you've got to take this somewhat seriously. Now, I mean, my Ferdinand a thief, but if you've got anything like uh, Night Kneeler, now is a good time to use it. Notice that even on a good estimate that your characters are still going to struggle a little bit. If they are, a Gambit is something that the Death Knight cannot immediately counter, and thus is an option worth considering. Because a, a successful Gambit will also weaken the Death Knight. And the more units there are, the higher the might and hit rate. Th that, that cannon will happen. I'm, I'm just doing this as an example. Don't worry, don't worry. Also make sure that your characters do have an offensive gambit that they can take it, they can use and take advantage of. If you are going to go the gambit route. And I might rewind this, but I'm just going to show you what happens. Yep, the Death Knight will easily take out one of your characters if they're not careful. Now if I was on Classic, that would have been a terrible thing. But I'm not, so I'm just going to show you how my main character, Byleth, will just basically take out the Death Knight. Yes, I can survive a crit. It's tough, but it's possible. Which leaves... The Death Knight open to an arrow. It's pretty difficult because the Death Knight's criticals can come pretty erratically. But once you've taken down the Death Knight this way, the battle ends just the same as always. And that is the end of the Underground Chamber walkthrough on both with both taking out the Death Knight as an option and taking out all units on the map as an option. Just remember that if you are taking out all units on the map, you must clear all units on the right side of the map as well, and this means unlocking all the doors. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please do subscribe. There will be more videos like this in the future. Otherwise, I hope to see you in another one of my videos down the line. Thanks again, and see you then!